We talk about challenging bosses, we talk about easy bosses, but now we want to spend some time on the ones you underestimate. They may not be the hardest bosses out there, but these can catch you by surprise because they might initially seem easy or harmless or just not that bad. So here are our 10 favorite examples of bosses that look easy, but are actually pretty hard. Starting off with number 10, let's talk about the Draugr Death Lords. You come across all sorts of weird stuff in Skyrim, but the Death Lords can be some of the biggest pains in the ass if you aren't expecting them. They're also one of the less boss style enemies on this list, but it still feels like every time you face them, they look really, really similar to the other Draugr, which can usually be, you know, dispensed pretty easily. And honestly, at first, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people mistook a Death Lord for just a standard run-of-the-mill zombie Nord boy, but man, these are something else. Death Lords set themselves apart by having just way better weapons than the rush the old trash that the lesser brethren have, instead sporting these ancient Nord or ebony weapons, which are frequently enchanted, meaning they are even even more formidable than you'd even expect. On top of that, they all use dragon shouts like Frost Breath and Unrelenting Force and have shorter intervals than you're used to, so they're a real force to be reckoned with. Not to mention the Death Lord Archers, which have higher health and stamina and ebony weapons, meaning they can very easily pick off even a high level player with just a few hits and send you back to your last save. That said, at least they don't really start popping up and becoming common until around level 30-ish, so you'll be better suited to take them on then, but you can very easily go somewhere you shouldn't early on and get your ass completely handed to you before you even know what hit you. Now next at number 9, this one is actually an optional boss in South Park, the Fractured Butt Hole, but it can still be a real pain in the ass. If you go into Freeman's Tacos, Welcome to Freeman's Tacos. If there's anything I can interest you in, well, you just let me know. Walk behind the counter and attack Morgan Freeman three times, and then you'll immediately be transitioned into a battle. And that is a hell of a boss battle. This kind taco vendor and star of stage and screen is actually the hardest boss in the game, and as such should be treated as pretty much an end game activity. And even then, it'll still be a huge challenge after you've like leveled up a ton and just decked out your character. He'll totally whoop your ass and heal himself up if you're not prepared and don't try to keep it interrupting his turn. And he'll eventually call in a younger version of himself and will keep launching attacks that can potentially affect the status of your whole party, so he's incredibly ridiculous and formidable and definitely worth taking a shot at only if you've finished the game. Now at number 8, Garamin in Bloodborne is the perfect example of underestimating. Uh, look at him. Most of the time you see him, he's yet another Souls character. You know, he's, he's crusty, he doesn't move around much, he kind of mumbles some deep poetic stuff, and ultimately, he just looks old as hell. That is, of course, until he reveals himself as your final opponent, and he stands up from his wheelchair, and suddenly he's a badass hunter armed to the teeth. He's pretty much the final boss of Bloodborne, and he will kick your ass. Now, he looked easy at first, of course, just being an old man sitting there, but if you've paid attention while playing, you may have suspected he would be eventually surprising and kicking your ass. I mean, other examples like the Suspicious Beggar, anyone? Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, next up in the Spirit of Souls games, we gotta talk about one more. There's plenty, though, but we like this one the best. Dark Souls 2. Let's talk about Vendrick. This technically optional boss fight in the Undead Crypt is a nasty old dying king who seriously just kind of looks like a tall zombie. He moves incredibly slow, shuffling around, looks like he can barely stand, until you engage in the fight, and like just so many other bosses in Souls games, he could totally kick your ass. Because he's a Dark Souls boss, I mean, come on. He still moves slow, he swings very slow, but every so often, he can surprise you just enough to get the upper hand. And he's not the most difficult boss in the game by far, but if you go into it thinking he's just a big zombie, you can still get rocked pretty hard. Next at number six, Nier Automata, Emil is pretty unsuspecting the first time you meet him. Just rolling around on his little cart, blasting his hot jams and peddling his wares, and Emil is just pretty cool. Why would you even want to fight Emil? That said, if you do decide to fight Emil, prepare for a real knockdown drag out battle because They'll definitely give it to you here. Emil will go from a friendly shopkeeper to a massive flying centipede-like monster that you'll have to fight in a maelstrom as giant Emil heads fall from the sky and you target its various body segments. They're super intense, deal out a ton of damage, and honestly, it's just a really wild boss fight, which you'd never see coming from a funny little dude in a mask just riding around the map selling you shit, but hey, the more you know. Now at number five, this one isn't actually a boss fight, but we just wanted to talk about it because holy crap, the chickens in the Legends of Zelda games can really, really mess you up. If you just leave them be, they won't do a damn thing. I mean, heck, you can even mess with them a little by picking them up, you know, throwing them or even jumping off of buildings with them to make your way across further distances. But if you attack them a few times, 
then you've got a real mess on your hands. Seasoned players will probably know what I'm talking about. If you mess up a chicken and make it call out for help, uh, then you make all of his chicken homies fly in and then just absolutely swarm you. This is kind of like a Zelda staple, a little Easter egg, and, and we just love them. I, I don't think there's any place in the game that naturally has that many chickens in one place, but man, after seeing them all come at you at once, maybe that's a good thing. Over to number four, Caroline and Justine look super unassuming at first in Persona 5. They're just technically the prison wardens in Persona 5's version of the Velvet Room with you, the player character, being the prisoner they're tasked with rehabilitating. That said, they're technically children, you know, literally smaller in stature than anyone else in the main character roster. So when you face off with them in the Velvet Room later on in the game, it's easy to think that you'd be able to take them on with no sweat. Hell, you've been forging bonds and personas and leveling up for like 50 hours at this point. So how hard can they be? The answer is very, and you'll actually find yourself in a multi-phase battle with very specific battle parameters set that, uh, if not met, can result in the twins using a unique skill that results in your entire party being completely freaking wiped out, regardless of level or strength. You also need to be smart and plan your strategy to take out both of the twins at the same time with an attack that can target both simultaneously, or else the remaining twin will just revive the other with a ton of HP. So yeah, we just like talking about Persona, and this one in particular can be jarring, given the quaint appearance of these specific enemies, but I mean, isn't that just kind of what this whole list is about? Because next at number three, you know we had to mention him, Sans from Undertale. First off, like, why would you want to fight him? He seems like such a cool dude. I mean, look at him. He's, you know, a cool skeleton man in a dope jacket who's hanging out. But it's really one of the few games on the list I'd, I'd rather you see for yourself, even though we're including a spoiler warning. Still, it's special. But he will catch you off guard because he's so chill. In some ways, he can seem and come off kind of lazy, but there's more to him than that. But still, you gotta fight him, and he can kick your ass, and you die a lot, and it's sad. Seriously, check this one out for yourself, because the build is really what's worth it. Now, coming down to number two, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is a fun and challenging game right from the start, but man, do they throw you for a loop right at the second boss. You pop in, and there's this big old owl, which, like, it's an owl, how hard can it be? Birds are dumb as hell. But then he drags you right into it by throwing eggs, deadly feathers, and spiked ice balls at you, requiring you to nail the boss with their own freshly hatched children to initiate the next stage of the battle, which will take you a little while to figure out. Then they, they learn some new tricks and keep trying to knock you off an elevated platform while dodging feathers and eggs and trying to do it all over again before shooting you even higher into the air and throwing even more attacks and enemy types at you. It's a good boss fight when you figure out what the game actually expects of you. And it sure as hell is super rewarding when you make it out of the other side of it alive. But holy crap, that boss fight just kind of seemed to come out of nowhere and ended up just being way more difficult than expected. This essentially is the first boss battle in the game that kind of mans you up and sets you up for what the rest of the game is gonna be like. Now finally coming down to number one, if we're talking about bosses that look easy but can surprisingly kick your ass, we could have put literally any boss from Cuphead on here. The game is unapologetically difficult from start to finish and literally all of the bosses are incredibly challenging. That said, if there was one that was like a standout for this list, it has to be Goopy Legrand. I mean, just look at this guy. He's literally a big blue ball of goo and when you first encounter him, just kind of bouncing around the screen and he looks kind of happy. That being said, like once he gets into it, once he gets into the battle, he'll take your ass for a ride. Jumping transitions to straight up trying to punch you in the face and, and then when you think he's done for, you have to fight his damn tombstone as it tracks you around the screen and tries to crush you. It's rough as hell and way more than you would expect from the pretty unassuming happy ball of goop you first encounter at the start of the battle. But really, this is the magic of Cuphead and you can literally insert any other Cuphead boss into this thanks to the beautiful animation. We can talk about these all day, but we just got one more as a bonus just because we love to talk about Shovel Knight. We gotta give props to the Tinker Knight boss. When you come upon him, he's just this little goofy craftsman in his workshop. Uh, you engage in the fight and he bounces around trying to hit you and throwing wrenches at you and stuff. He's a pretty simple old school boss. You jump over him to dodge and land on his head a bunch until you knock him out and then he falls off screen. The screen changes and after a cue and everything, it feels like he's done. Just when you think you're in the clear though, after a few seconds, he comes back in this big giant tank drill machine thing that is way more of a compelling boss battle. Surprise, good luck with that one. But those are 10 bosses where looks can be deceiving. We thought these looked pretty easy the first time and then they totally beat us up. 
There are tons more examples out there though. Just know these are our personal choices from the team. So we wanna hear in the comments, what bosses caught you by surprise the most? What boss did you completely underestimate? Let's talk about this stuff down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. But if you enjoyed this video, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We'd really appreciate that. But if you're new, it's worth subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.